Today we're going to be talking about what to pack, what to bring with you, what not to bring with you, how to pack it, how to figure out if you need to bring something with you or not. So I'm going to go over some of the things that I brought, some of the things I wish I hadn't brought, and how I got it all here in a relatively reasonable amount of money. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Hey guys, it's Lauren of everything you see at Oda Spaghetti. I am an American living in Italy and I'm here to give you advice, tips and tricks, everything you need to know about moving and living in Italy as an American. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I have some great topics coming up for you guys all about living and moving to Italy. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing to know about packing for Italy is there's a lot of different factors to consider. Are you going there for more or less than six months? Do you have a family? Are you gonna be working while you're there? There's a lot of things to consider when you're considering how much and what to bring and how to pack it. If you're going to be here for less than six months, then your packing list is gonna look a little bit different than someone who's moving here for more than six months or permanently or moving to get married, something like that or if you have kids, or if you're going to be working while you're here. So there's a lot of different things to consider when you're packing for your move to Italy. The other thing to consider is customs. Now, because you're moving there for the purposes of relocation, you get to bring in your household goods duty-free. You can do this for up to six months after you move. So if you aren't really sure exactly what to bring and you're not really sure what you're gonna need, you can head over, figure out what your situation is, and then maybe ship some stuff later, maybe have people from home ship stuff to you later, but you have up to six months to make that happen. The other caveat is that you have to have owned the items for at least 12 months before you ship them. Now, my actual experience is that nobody checked. They didn't really even open the boxes to see if anything was new, but I bought a bunch of new clothes before I came because I had a feeling I was gonna have a hard time finding plus size clothes in Italy. So I bought a bunch of new clothes, took the tags off, packed them. They didn't even open the boxes. However, technically the rule is that you're supposed to have owned the items and used them within your house for the 12 months preceding your move. Otherwise, you're supposed to pay customs duties on them. So. Keep that in mind when you're thinking about what to pack, what to bring, and what you want to leave behind. The other factor to consider is cost. It is very expensive to ship things overseas. The next thing we have to talk about is clothing. Now, my opinion is if you wear it, you should bring it. Italy does have some extreme climates. We have, you know, a lot of warmth in the south. The north can get pretty cold during the winter. But in general, all areas have sort of all types of weather. The other thing to think about is how easy is it for you to find clothing in your size that you like. Now I am plus size and even in the US it's hard for me to find clothes. So I went out and bought some new clothes, packed them up and brought them with me to make sure that I had sort of all my bases covered. I have loungewear, I have you know nice dresses for going out, way too many shoes you know, nice shirts and pants that aren't leggings. <laughs> so you really have to consider your personal situation and how easy it is for you to shop. So just keep all of those things in mind when you're deciding what clothes to pack, what clothes to bring, what clothes to buy, and consider the space that you have available to you both in your luggage and in the place that you're going to be living because Storage in European apartments is very hard to find. If you wanna know why all my clothes are hanging on a clothes rack in my bedroom, then you'll have to check out my apartment tour of, that shows you what kind of storage I have in my tiny European apartment. So let's move on to the kitchen and we'll talk about some food items, some kitchen utensils, all that good stuff. Welcome to my tiny by American standards, but giant by <laughs> Italian standards kitchen. I wanna talk a little bit about some of the foods that I brought with me because I heard that I wouldn't be able to get them here and some of the kitchen utensils that I brought and some of the things that I maybe didn't need to bring and brought anyway. I am a big baker, so I wanted to make sure that I had the ingredients that I needed to make the 
things that were important to me, the things that felt homey to me, the things that I knew that I would miss if I couldn't have them or couldn't make them. So I actually brought quite a bit of things to bake when I came over here. Things like vanilla extract, yes I have a list, <laughs> vanilla extract, chocolate chips, Reese's cups, peanut butter, brown sugar, celery salt, cream of tartar, garlic salt, quick rise yeast, and things like non-EU spices like taco seasoning, Old Bay, Cajun seasoning, any sort of non-European spices that you might need for your cooking. Um, and baking powder, because baking soda is very common, but baking powder is not. So if you are a baker and you use recipes with baking powder in them, I highly recommend bringing at least a couple of canisters with you. Things that I brought that I didn't need to bring, because I can get them here, ketchup, mayonnaise, M&Ms, Oreos, did not realize Oreos were so popular here, but they are. So it was nice when I got here to have those things. I've already made some banana bread, used my brown sugar a few times. It's been nice to have the option to use those things to make the things that make it feel like home to me. The other thing I wanna talk about in the kitchen is utensils. Now, I am not a great cook. I don't even pretend to be, but I am very picky about the utensils that I use. I don't like the cheap ones that are really floppy, that are hard to like scoop things up and they bend. It drives me crazy. I had been staying in some Airbnbs before I came here and I knew that it was important to me to have my kitchen tools with me, my things that were important. So I actually brought everything you see here. Um, I brought some of my spatulas, I brought a couple of spoons, I brought this spatula, um, even the scissors actually came with me because when I moved into my first apartment in Austin, the one thing I didn't have was scissors. And you know what you need to open a package of new scissors? Is scissors. So I made sure to bring lots of scissors with me this time when I moved. Another thing that I brought that was really helpful were these turnstiles. So to keep all of my spices on and make sure that my cabinet stays open, you'll notice my baking powder up there, like we talked about. I bought these shells at Ikea, but the turnstiles were kind of expensive and I bought them at the container store. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to buy similar things here. So I actually made sure to bring those. Some other things that I brought for the kitchen that I probably didn't need to were mixing bowls. Like I said before, I am a really big baker, so I like having bowls of different sizes to mix things and to prepare food and things like that. I could have probably bought them here. I didn't really need to bring them. I just knew what I liked and I already had them and it seemed silly to me to buy more of things that I already had. I also brought my KitchenAid stand mixer. <laughs> Some things that I didn't bring for my kitchen was pretty much all of the appliances. Something to keep in mind when you're moving from the US to anywhere in Europe is that the electricity is different. Not the electricity itself, but the current and the voltage and things like that. While some electronics you can get away with just using a little adapter, anything with a motor or anything with a heating element, the adapter is not gonna be enough. And even the transformers that they have still aren't necessarily the greatest solution. You can still burn out things with a motor or a heating element. I made sure not to bring anything for the kitchen that had a motor or a heating element. When I got here, I bought a little hand mixer, I bought a blender, I bought a toaster. None of those things made any sense to bring with me from the US because they all had different electrical requirements. Another thing I didn't bring was dishes. My dishes were just from Ikea. They weren't anything fancy. They were kind of heavy. For me, it didn't make sense to ship things that I could easily buy here if I didn't really care about them specifically. And I knew that there was an Ikea nearby, so I knew that I could rebuy the exact same plates here and that I was coming to a fully furnished kitchen, so I didn't know what I would actually need for plates and things. So I didn't ship any plates, any serving ware, anything like that. I didn't bring any pots or pans, that's not true. I brought a griddle, but my stovetop is actually induction and I can't use the griddle that I brought. I can get like an attachment to go on it, but it's not really worth it to me. I don't use the griddle very often, I just use a frying pan instead. So I would wait to see what kind of an what kind of cooktop you have before deciding what to bring. I actually had to buy some new pans when I got here. The pots worked, the pans that they left in the kitchen were not induction friendly, so I ended up buying a couple. Not a big deal. Let's move on and talk a little bit more about what's next on the list. Let's go over to the office and talk about what to bring if you're going to be working here and the things that I brought. 
I'm guessing if you're coming here, you're either retired or you work remotely. Now, I work remotely, so it was important to me to have a good usable workspace. So what I did was I actually bought a new computer before I came. I make good financial decisions. I bought a new computer before I came because I knew that my computer was pretty old and I knew that it would be more expensive to replace once I got here. So I actually bought a brand new MacBook Pro before I came to Italy. I also brought my monitor with me. I actually shipped my monitor. I looked into the cost of shipping versus buying new and it was actually cheaper to ship it, though now I'm considering if I have to ship it back, it's gonna be more expensive than if I had just bought one here. Consider that if you're gonna only be here six months, it may more make more sense to buy a new one and then resell it when you leave, as opposed to if you're moving here more permanently, then it may, might, might make more sense to actually ship it. I also brought my keyboard. Um, this I actually bought new at Ikea. This is a monitor stand, you kind of can't really see it in the camera. Um, this is a monitor stand I bought at Ikea. The desk I bought, I brought my Google Home with me because it was small so it was easy to pack and I like listening to music. The other thing that I got that was really helpful for me in setting up my desk with my combination of American and European plugs was this adapter surge protector. It has American plugs that I can plug into, but the plug that I plug out of is an Italian one. So I can plug in some of my American electronics, such as my monitor, my powered USB port, which I also brought with me, and then plug that into an Italian wall plug because it has an Italian plug on the back. Um, I will link to that on Amazon because it, it was so helpful and you'll never find it when you're in Italy. The other thing that I brought with me, which was kind of silly in retrospect, was my printer. It was very small, so it seemed worth it to pack it into a bigger box with a bunch of other stuff. I've only used it once since I've been here in the month and a half to print out movie tickets, so I guess it was helpful in that sense, but I don't know that it was really necessary. I packed the toner separate because you cannot ship printer with printers with toner in it, so I packed the toner separate um, and brought it with me. Live and learn. I don't know if that was the best choice. The other thing that I brought with me was my laptop stand. I specifically bought one that was travel friendly. It actually folds down really compactly. It's called the Roost and it's intended for digital nomads and people moving around a lot. I had a bigger one on my desk back in Texas, but I didn't want to take up the space in my suitcase, so I actually bought the smaller one to bring with me. The other thing to think about for work is if you need any literature. So I have taken a lot of in-person classes that have workbooks, and so I actually did ship all of those workbooks because I reference them pretty frequently when I'm creating courses or you know doing workshops and things like that. So I like having those reference materials. I also shipped a bunch of the business books that I bought and in retrospect I don't know that I really needed to. They're all available online. I probably could have just you know gotten the Kindle versions but I like having physical books. It's not a ton, a couple. I also shipped a bunch of pens and pencils because you always need a pen and you never have one. I shipped binder clips for some reason. I don't know, I had them, so I <laughs> threw them in a box. Probably not necessary. Some things that I wish that I had shipped were some post-it notes. They have them here, I just never remember to buy them when I go to the store, so I wish that I had just tossed a couple packages in the box. I also brought some notebooks with me so that I can actually write things down. Again, all things that you can buy in Italy that's not a third world country but I already had them so I just felt it was easy to throw them into the boxes I was already packing. If I really took a step back and considered all the things that I was just throwing in a box I probably could have cut back on a couple of the boxes that I brought and not sent so many boxes but you know you live and you learn so hopefully you all can learn from my mistakes and bring less than you think you need because it adds up fast. Next, we're going to talk about whether or not you should ship your car. But first, you need to go sit somewhere a little bit more comfortable. So you're moving to Italy and you have a car or a motorcycle that you want to bring with you. Now, my blanket advice is to not do that. Unless it's a, an antique, actually even if it is an antique, or something with sentimental value, first off, shipping is going to be astronomical. And then it has to be modified to meet emission standards in the US, even if it's an antique. So really look into and research what's involved in bringing a car if you do decide that 
You must bring your car with you. The other thing is, gas is really expensive here. Cars sold in America are not necessarily as efficient as cars sold in the EU. So I highly recommend really considering whether or not you need your specific car or if you can just buy a car when you get here or lease or rent a car, which I will be talking about in a future video. The other piece we need to talk about is furniture. So my general thought on bringing furniture is don't. It's so easy to buy furniture in Italy. You can get Ikea level stuff. You can get, you know, nicer stuff on Amazon. There's tons of furniture stores. There's plenty of antique places you can go to buy antique furniture if you wanted to do that. So unless your furniture has real sentimental value or, you know, monetary value that would make it worth the cost of shipping, I would really seriously consider not shipping any furniture. Okay, sorry to jump in, but I'm gonna cut that video right there. It was getting kind of long, so I've actually split this video into two different pieces. Part one, which you just watched, was all about what you should pack to bring to Italy and what you shouldn't pack to bring to Italy. Part two is going to be about how to actually pack it. So that part will be coming soon. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the updates in the future. And I will see you guys again soon. Ciao. Celery salt, cream of tartar, garlic sauce, quick rise yeast, garlic sauce, <laughs> garlic salt, chocolate chips, Reese's cups. I did not bring Reese's cups, I wish I did. And dishes was definitely on that list. Dishes were definitely on that list.